Ooh. So this over here is a mini PC from Geekcom, and we're gonna be checking it out. How good is it? What are you gonna get with it? What if we can overclock it a bit? Is it worth it? And what's inside? Let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method, including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So the product model for this one is the XT12 Pro. There is XT13 Pro now out as well. And I should have that video coming out very, very shortly. So hit subscribe. We've got 32 gigs of RAM and then one terabyte SSD. Look at that. Three years limited warranty. Now that's a bit more than Mac Mini, isn't it? Ooh, I like this Apple style films around it. That's very Apple-like doesn't smell apple like that's pretty cool ventilation actually this is design underneath ventilation is on the side one of the most interesting things uh, what i can see here is that for this particular model they have actually removed the sd card reader that geekcom had on all of their mini pcs so that's a little bit of a shame so we'll take a look at that in a minute visa plate for your monitor you want to attach it behind your monitor the power brick which is from FSP, which is a very good uh, brand, by the way. 120 watts HDMI cable and the second part of the power cord. So let's take a look at the port selection. On the back, we have two USB type 4 ports. So these are 40 gigabits per second speed, plus also support display as well as power delivery through these. It's kind of like a fake Thunderbolt. They're slightly different than Thunderbolt, but there we go. Two HDMI ports, one 2.5 gigabit LAN, one 10 gigabit USB type A and one 2.0 USB type A. The chassis feels to be out of metal, which is nice. Your DC in port. And in the front, we have two USB type A, 10 gigabits in speed, headphone and mic combo jack and a power button. Well, let's do Okay, so my microphone died. So from this point, I'm gonna actually have to give you a little bit of a lip sync. So. Here's what happened. Turn it on and then see how good is it. So now the PC is on and um, as you can see, we are on task manager. We can see Intel 12th gen i9 12900H. It's got 14 cores, 20 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. Interestingly, this is DDR4, not DDR5. 3200 megahertz SSD, Lexar NM7A1, one terabyte. Never actually seen that particular model before, but Gen 4, Wi Fi 6E, and the integrated XE graphics. Let's do a little performance test now on Cinebench R23. Multi core. Now let's take a look. Now we're pulling 50 watts. Come on, fans, come on. And now the fans come on. Interestingly, we're still not thermal throttling. We're pushing 55 watts through there. And now, as you can see, the PL2 has clicked into 30 watt, 35 watts. PL2 is 30, 80 watts and then 35 watts for PL1. So I boost differently. Interestingly, we're not thermal throttling, which is interesting. Up to five gigahertz with push there, 4.9, not bad. Performance is very solid. 10,000, just under 11K points. I think we can get a little bit more. As you can see, 56 watts. We can up the PL2, PL1. 256 because they kept it still under the thermal throttle, throttling threshold we check the bios there's nothing in the bios that we uh, that help us we can put the fans up in performance mode they click in a little bit earlier but that doesn't really change anything the normal one is still fine we're going to go to xdu and advanced tuning and let's change the pl1 and pl2 limit and we're going to raise this to 56 watts ish and push the time window a little longer apply and let's try again check this now 12,000 points we literally gained 20% performance extra on top it did thermal throttle this time though and we hit 101 degrees it's still going quite warm but there is a bit of performance in store there Let's take a look at the graphics power and how much graphics power we're pulling. This is Fermac. But interesting, we're still not pulling the 80 watts what the PL2 has been set to. 
but it's still only pushing less than that. So not particularly good for f frame rates. 23 frames, GPU is pulling about 20 watts. I wouldn't say this is for gaming, but let's take a look what's inside and then we've got another crazy idea. As you can see, there is a little heatsink on the top for the M.2 SSDs. There's a second slot available. This is 40 millimeter one, so 2240. It's not a very popular option of M.2. There's a Lexar M.2 NVMe. This is SATA connected there, which means that you can actually connect 2.5 inch SATA drive in there as well, but there's no space. But look at that. Look at that. There is actually SD card slot there, but there's nothing on the chassis. There's no slot on the chassis. That is very odd. Did they forget that? Yeah, they, they must have forgot. You can see they forgot to chisel it out because see the Kensig the lock into there, but there's no SD card slot on the chassis. Just testing the SD cards and it absolutely works. That is so weird. That's very interesting. I don't know if this is just my model or their model, but it's very odd. There's a few screws we have to do here and then we can see onto the other side. There's Wi-Fi antennas that go underneath the M.2 SSD and there's a Wi-Fi card there. And the heatsink is quite warm because we just used it. There's like some RAM as well. This is DDR4 RAM. So let's take the fan off there and the glue on the heatsink has a little bit melted. Usually it kind of sticks there, but this heat has already um, glued together there. There's two heat pipes, they're quite big, squish down, and then we've got our CPU there, the die in there. There's a bit of cooling also on the, the power delivery on the MOSFETs there, the VRMs. We've got some PWM extensions from a PC that's just off the frame there where we can get some signal and then actually attach a um, normal 120 millimeter fan. Let's see if we can push a little more performance out of this PC. Let's have a look if it works. So plugging the PWM in. Right, this is Fantex T30. It's super powerful fan. We're gonna plug this uh, included fan already into that fan header there so that the BIOS doesn't freak out that says that, oh, there's no fan going. So we're kind of fooling the BIOS a little bit here. Plug in the power and HDMI. Plug in first turn on, press the power button. Voila, the light comes on. Light is on. And we've got a boot. <clears throat> we moved the PL1 and PL2 a little bit, 85 and 105. Temperatures are pretty good. It... Interestingly, we're still pushing only 55 watts. So it's somehow limited in the BIOS. From the socket, we're pulling about 78 watts. So let's try adjusting the fan on top of it rather than over it and we're not thermal throttling 55 watts all the way through. Didn't make much of a difference, only 12,800 something points. And even if we absolutely remove the power limited, because it's an un not um, unlocked CPU, we can't actually adjust any clock speed. Let's try one more time. CPU temperatures aren't bad, 62 degrees, 63 degrees, slowly climbing. And this Fantex D30 is doing a great job. Performance cohorts are going about 3 gigahertz but I think the power delivery is the one that's limiting us here 55 through even though we're unlimited PL2 13400 that's pretty much max what we can out of this one not much more not bad as you can see single core performance does go up to 5 gigahertz now, since we didn't thermal throttle we could say that the th thermal paste application was pretty fine, so I don't really need to redo it, so you wouldn't either. There was enough cooling, it was fine. If we were still thermal throttling, even with a big fan, we would have probably looked at the thermal paste application, but right now, 
and this is fine with just that little fan. By the way, if you want to pick it out, the links are in the description below. I've just checked the benchmark and a 13,000 scores roughly in Cinebench R23 is equal to Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G, which is an 8-core CPU, or the Ryzen 7 5700G CPU. So it's pulling half the power of the desktop variants and performing all the same. So pretty good performance per watt efficiency. So there is an M.2 Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card there as well, which is fast enough, so you don't really need to change it. Wi-Fi 6 is fast enough, but it's good that you can upgrade it or change it if needed to. It's not glued in and you can update the RAM as well. And now screwing that in. I really like the design of this mini PC. I like that the bottom is this cool honeycomb pattern and then the grills on the sides and the pattern continues on the sides. I like that there's a white color on the top that somehow can be ch changed, I guess, or 3D printed your own version. It's a pretty cool metal build. There's nothing extra. I wish the SD card slot would still be in there. And I think for this PC, it will be a really cool thing to have if you want to use it as an ingest situation. The 12th gen 12900H is very, very good. It's not as good as the 13 and 14. Uh, in terms of single core performance, but it's still very, very good for just browsing your documents and whatever you're doing, multitasking. So I've got a video coming out uh, very soon about the 13th gen one. I've got another idea how to use these mini PCs, but I haven't figured it out exactly. I have to do some more research and then perhaps we'll see something very interesting about these mini PCs. I might have something very interesting for you for these mini PCs. Again, I love that PCs are getting so small and I think it's a very cool solid PC. I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you want to check this one out there and check out the 13th gen as well, just in case the price is roughly about the same and some AMD versions that I'll be making videos out very, very soon as well. This here is more like an office PC where you don't need gaming performance and you don't have very good, you know, integrated gaming performance. But then this is more like an office one where you have very solid connectivity and monitor ports and USB-C, all of these peripherals and anything you need in there are very, very good. Thanks guys for watching. And if you do want to reach out to me next, I'm going to get back to all the messages in there. So that's linked in the description below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.